Alrighty. Da, 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 da. Part two. Here we go. So we see that we left off with the tension finally blowing over. Um, the Continental Congress decides we do not want to pay, do these taxes things anymore, and we want these intolerable acts removed. We are done with it. And the British are sort of like, all right, well, we're not going to listen to that. So each start preparing for war. So we see here that by doing this, now the colonists are becoming patriots. So if you're wondering why the New England Patriots are called the New England Patriots, it's because the name Patriot comes from here. Um, the idea that they came from the New England colonies, um, and of course the Patriots were the colonists who decided they want their independence and they want to form, and they had to form a militia, which is just uh, ordinary people like you know me, your parents, um, to join an army or to fight battle. I guess is because armies are different. So we see that they're all taking these steps, and eventually becomes the British know this. They do not want the um, call the Patriots to be able to be successful, so they get their governor um, or the general Thomas Gage or, um, into Boston and to get him ready to uh, let's see, sorry, um, in Boston, yes, to get ready to stop the call the Patriots. The reason for this is because the Patriots are stockpiling materials and supplies. So, unable to keep it a secret, um, the Patriots found out that they were going to attack. They just didn't know whether it would be land or by sea. So Paul Revere and um, William Dawes prevented. They were able to go. Once they found out that it was by river by sea, they went and they were able to warn the Minutemen. Now, Minutemen were the militia, so ordinary people, but they had special training. Minutemen were ones where it's like, Hey, wake up. We're about to fight. They're ready to go. That minute. Militia uh, were more, they could take their time to get ready to, and things like that. Where the Minutemen were, boom, we're ready. I'm ready to go. And I got special training as well. So let's do this. Now, let's get to the other parts of here. The first battles. We have the battles of Lexington, Concord, and Bunker Hill. So, he is able to warn them, so they finally meet up, and we see that the British and the call and the Patriots are ready to fight. To this day, no one still knows who shot this shot either. Now, obviously, either side can make their case for who. The point is, no one knows. And during this battle, you can see that the British had the upper hand initially. You see that um, it's also called the shot heard around the world. We see that the British did win this battle of Lexington with only one shoulder hurt. Eight Patriots died while nine were wounded. The battle then moved to Concord. And just so you guys can get a visual of this. As you can see here at the book, this is where probably Vera's ride, Dahl's ride. Boston. You can see Lexicans started over here. The battle moved to Concord, and that's eventually going to move back here. You're going to see when we discuss here, the British beat the colonists here. Colonists put, push the British back, and then we'll eventually see how the British actually win the whole thing. Not the whole war, but at least the start, this first battle. So when they get to Concord, the Minutemen finally overpower them. With all these Minutemen coming, they didn't expect it, the British, they're starting to get overwhelmed. We see that 250 plus British soldiers are killed or wounded. So take advantage of that. And the battle will then move to Bunker Hill. Now, the colonists were smart. They knew that getting up top gave them the best advantage. So they set up there, when in reality it's actually on Breed's Hill. You know, it's called the Battle of Bunker Hill. It was actually on Breed's Hill where it was fought. So they had a nice setup. British attack. Call, the Patriots push them back. British attack again. Patriots push them back. On the third attack, the British finally overtook the Minutemen and the Patriots and they surrendered, but they lost more than half of their armies to death or them gave her or wounded. And their general even said, 
We can't survive another battle like this. We can't afford another one like this. Yes, we won. So in the very first um, sets of battle, the British won. They beat the Patriots. But they can't afford that. You won something minimal and lost more than half, over half of your army that fought. That's not good. A testament to the Patriots or the colonists who could fight and were resilient, but it's not the greatest situation for the British. This would then make them be more like, okay, we don't want to underestimate these guys. They can handle themselves. We got to be more careful. So then we see that the Second Continental Congress, if you remember in the previous video, the First Continental Congress said that if King George III did not accept their demand, they'd have another one. They meet up, this was after this battle, and they decide that we need to form an army. We can't just have a militia or minutemen, people who only work for a few months at a time, um, to do this battle for us. We need an army who's willing to fight till this war is over. So they decide to make an army with George Washington in command. But they also decide something else, which is interesting. So as you see, they make an army, but they don't want to fight anymore. Now they're like, okay, let's just get treated fairly. If it's fair, we're involved in decision making, we'll be okay. That is, let's just get this to be fair. Let's do one last petition. So they do an all branch, which is a sign of peace, an all branch petition signed by people to get to King George III. The idea, please, we just want to be treated fairly. We do not want to fight. Can we just be treated fairly now? So we see how their attitude sort of changed after that. And then, ironically, or coincidentally, however you want to think about it, King George III doesn't even read the letter. He just sends soldiers immediately to Boston. He's ready for war. At this point, King George III is like, all right, now it's personal. You took out all these guys. Now I'm going to take you out. And you see George III is really full on ready to just go. So, of course, by that, the petition's not read. If the petition's not read, there's not going to be any peace. That means war is going to happen. And we see that at the end of your section that the colonists, the patriots, were actually able to take some cannons um, and weapons from the British to get a good decent start. But the war is about to begin. And then, of course, you kids are just getting more set up for that. And we'll be going over more of that soon. But here we are. This is it. This is the beginning stages of the American Revolutionary War. And it just, it's just awesome to see how it all connects. I mean, you have the explorers who just want to see what this world's like, this new world. They start settling in. They start fighting for land. And then in this case, these colonists wanted more say, where like even the Spaniards won, where the Spaniards, they understood Spain was still in charge. These, col these colonists were like, yeah, we just want to be fair. We want more change. Like, this is... Whether they were true or not, victims or not, or whether the British were over mean or not, the point is, it all led to this. And then this American Revolutionary War, which will be an interesting sto um, stu thing to study, because as you'll see, the Patriots are definitely the underdogs. The British have more experience, bigger army. The, um, the Patriots are the underdogs over here. So if you ever want to root for the Patriots for once in your life, um, this would be your opportunity to do it. Although they already won, we know that because we're here. But if it makes you feel better, you can root for them. This is where it's all at. So, I hope you enjoyed the two videos for social studies on both lessons. And I'm looking forward to the next sections. They're very exciting. And it's going to be really great to um, discuss the American Revolutionary War. Because through this war, the United States, when we live here, is going to be born. And it's definitely going to be... Uh, historic. <laughs> all right. Well, I guess that's all I got for you. Have a wonderful day. Thanks for everything.